<laughs> there was nothing graceful about my attempt. Where's your fancy? Yeah. It's all pretty much swampy. We'll just have a look around the back of there, maybe. Yeah, kind of. Didn't get very far. <laughs> Don't know if you can get through there, but yeah. might be very marshy by look at these reeds. I'm thinking this might give us a bit of a more private area. Is that just a channel, not a path? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Possible. Well, it's not been used for a very long time. Just away from the main path of the river, isn't it? Yeah. Just think if we can get that clearing near that tree to the left. Then we're sort of off the beaten track, you know? No, it's not the best location in the world, but it'll do. Just gives you a bit of privacy, doesn't it? Space from people. And somebody's kindly, you know, left us a bin just in case there's any litter. What a random thing to find in the middle of here. Well, back over there, though, we're not clear enough. Where? It's more flat and dry. Where's this, mate? And there's more trees just over there. From there. You, can yeah, you can do. Yeah. Quite hard, isn't it, to get away from things? Well, you've got like uh, industry fucking sounds over there. <coughs> Building a, a new estate, I think. Like an extension.
too bad. All right. Because I've been in the sun, they've had a chance to dry. I'm gonna get some more. Yeah. Dead ones are slightly coloured different. Yeah. That one you can see got like a green tinge to it, the one in between the thumb and the finger. This one. As soon as you touch it, you can see it's got that bend in it. Whereas the other one. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's coloured slightly different. Yeah, you can tell the ones that are, are dead. I just spotted him from over there, I was like, hmm, I wonder. Well, I've got quite a bundle, so. You're out there? Yeah, well, don't run out of fuel, do you? <laughs> mm. having to use the backup kit really which is not the usual go-to woods kit that we would use um, just having to use the bog standard little farty striker you know what I mean? don't want to carry the big kit out here the big knife and all that kind of stuff bit of a pub, more public area where people do walk the dogs if we set back out of the way we should get a brew going um, put it out and then that will be it and um, we'll show like a, a tarp configuration I think it's called the plow point configuration which is again a quick easy go-to just bang up tarp configuration it'll give you a bit of shelter so and we've never done it before we've never done it before it's the first time so <laughs> here we go well, I think we're going Something's taking us back. Go. Might be quite smoky this because obviously we've had just no end of rain. Just kind of got over the back of a load of snow as well. Yep. A couple of twigs put it out. This is what we're battling on it today. No, it's realistic so far. There you go. There you go. With a gentle persuasion. Yeah, it's very smoky, you can see. Instant smoke. Quite thick. I just keep the little bits of fuel, tiny twigs, thin. It should uh, dry things out. As soon as you get the kettle on, it should be fine. It should burn through quite a bit there, yeah. Just want to kind of get a little pile of embers going so that when I pop that on, it doesn't smother it and put it out, given how damp things are. Struggle, we'll see. Let's see how we get with it. No, it's going. Look, too green. Some of these, so just building up the size of your fuel, start off with the thinnest possible fuel you can find. Hear that nice little snap to things you can check, see things that are actually you know, dying off, build up your fuel size and hopefully <laughs> the magic of fire should do what it needs to do. I'm going to attempt to put that on I think. Do you reckon, yeah? Yeah, it should, uh, should draw. Yeah, it should draw yeah, it. it's there drawing you go. straight away. And then you just snap and drop in. And Kelly Kettle, simple as that. And you just keep feeding the beast.
I think that's evenly dispersed. <laughs> That is a Kelly Castle. I'd allow that to. Did you get some mud? Or... Well, there's all that water over there. Go and pour it in the water. Is that hot? It's a bit hot. Wouldn't normally climb trees. Normally you just put something weighty on the end, throw it up over a branch and tie it off. Uh, but for the purposes of this, it was easier to just get up and tie it off. Now I've got to get down. Ambulance on standby? Yeah. Should have brought a crash mat. <laughs> Got a crash mat, it's called the ground. <laughs> hey! hey. <Don't> say. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're going to put the tarp up. What configuration was it called again, Dad? The plow, plow, plow point. Plow point. I think is what it's called. So you get one, you've got a three, perfect for a three by three tarp. Uh, you just take one corner and some cordage, get it up in the tree tied off. And if you have to just throw over a branch or like a rock or something or a large thick piece of log, fine, do that. Um, I had the opportunity to climb, so that made it a lot easier. Not a huge fan of black coffee, but we didn't bring any milk, so I have to make do. that is a plow point. It just gives you some protection from the rain and the elements if you're out and about. You see how big it is compared to my dad so at a push I'd say two people. Two people? Um, Two people plus gear, but if I'm sat in it and I'm sat back, 
you could have a fire out there, you know? Uh-huh. And this would accommodate you if you had no shelter skills, but you knew how to use a tarp and you have this protective layer. You can improvise all sorts of things. Obviously you've got the half open front where elements can get in, but if you're out for a day hike and say things turn for the worst, you've got your tarp on you, you've got your Kelly kettle on you, what's stopping you from finding a tree and constructing this to get you out of the elements, keep you dry, keep you relatively warm, rest up, have a hot brew. I'd say 10-15 minutes maybe. Yeah. Give it, you know, adjust it a little bit. Don't think it's that bad. Excuse the fog. A bit misty out today. <laughs> so what do you think? Overall thoughts? I think it's good. It's useful. Hmm. Useful. Functional. Oh yeah. Um, very simple. Very simple. So anybody can make this. Yeah. Um, How easy was that? Actually, well, we've never done it before, so. Uh, the most difficult part, I think, was getting the, getting one of the points up in the tree. Yeah. If anything, it's that. That's the only thing that somebody might struggle with is getting in a tree, tra tying the point yeah. to a tree. You just need to find a tree with a reasonably overhanging branch that's probably what six six to eight feet high. You know. And obviously, the lower the point is to the ground, the more shallow the angle of your shelter. So obviously, if your point's too high. You're going to have a very steep point, but if you lower the point, you're going to lower the angle of your shelter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, it's all personal choice, depending on how I could have put that point further down and made it shallow, put the sides out a bit further, tie it back to give us the the, the, the space at the back, and you've got then more cut more area coverage. Yeah. It just fiddle around with it, whatever suits your environment, whatever suits what's going on at the time. And uh, I think it would uh, suffice for a couple of nights as well. So if you plan on staying out for long periods of time, yeah. um, you could quite easily get away with it. And like my dad said earlier, you could have a fire just out the front. Mm. Um, have yourself a little fire pit on the go. Mm. I think between you and the tree, and as long as you don't have it like, you know, towering inferno, a bonfire, yeah. it is just a, a fire for warmth, for cooking, you know. Why not? This is the first day we've uh, been able to get out. Um, oh, the weather's been horrendous. Yeah. It's not that we're weather <coughs> shy. I mean, obviously, if you're going out and you're out and the weather turns, you've got your waterproofs on you, not a lot you can do about it. You've just got to deal with it and you're out in the elements then. So so be it, so la vie. But I'm not one for sitting at home and going, oh, it's a rainy day. Let's go out. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, don't fancy being cold and wet on purpose. No. So. It's been snowing, oh, raining. Yeah, some snow. Um, but yeah, it's the first clear, dry day today. So took the opportunity to get out. We've been like caged lions, haven't we? Mm. I think a lot of people have. So yeah. And uh, let me know in the comments, either on this video or whatever, um, whether you would like to see carving video, wood carving video, um, and also. A leather craft video because my dad started doing leather craft so um i'm like no to... expert no i'm neither, just learning I. Um, but it's the the documented journey maybe along the way we're wondering whether that would maybe interest people covering things like keychain lighter holders or you can pop a, a bic light around your neck there is something that i would like to show um, which i'll probably do at home um, i think it's called a, a ranger kit where you have a Bic lighter um, and a fuel source connected with paracord together. Um, but I'll look into doing that maybe at a later date. Um, but yeah, I, I do all sorts of things. Um, what have I recently done? Uh, um, a hip flask. Um, not a lot of people agree with smoking, but I've done a pipe tobacco roll, a um, little pouch. So yeah quite a few different things and I'm just going to branch out and try as many different things as possible I mean I've even covered my silky saw plastic case that comes with a silky saw 
just because I really didn't like the way it functioned. No, I think the plastic is naff, but... The belt loop isn't exactly very secure. I'm always worrying about it falling off the belt or it coming loose. So I was looking for an alternative. Mm. So I've just covered it in leather and added a loop. And now it can go on the belt and attach with a carabiner. Um, I'm more happy with that. It feels more secure. And I've uh, started carving uh, Santas, snowmen, um, and... Uh, what would you call them, wood spirits, um, into basswood blocks. Um, I've been watching quite a lot of uh, a guy called Doug Linker on YouTube. Hi, Doug. Hi, Doug. <laughs> um, he's a Canadian carpenter by trade, and uh, I just happened upon his video on YouTube, and uh, I was hooked. Um, been carving five days now, and I think uh, um, I am picked it up quite, picked it quite, up quite quick. quick. Yeah, To so. a point where... People are actually asking him to carve things mm. for them. Yeah. For a price. <laughs> for a price. <laughs> Which he's quite stunned by. Mm. But again, that just shows his capabilities. Um, and he is good at what he does. And, and I'm, I'm so proud. Couldn't be prouder. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> have a little look. Uh, we have put pictures on our Instagram. Um, we even put pictures on our Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, we may do videos. So watch this space hopefully soon <laughs> if the weather doesn't go bad again and depending on um, when we're free um, we'll get out as often we'll as get we out and do a, an overnight somewhere um, maybe maybe hopefully <laughs> <laughs> so yeah stay tuned for that as well um, so thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe if you haven't already, please go into the description. Um, there should be a Patreon link there if you want to support us um, and what we do. So, thank you very much for watching. This has been FNS BUP. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt, for doing the uh, outro. Okay. See you later. Bye -bye.